Music is this amazing cocktail of emotion and science. We've been using it to connect with each other for thousands of years. How does music work its magic on us? Why does it affect us with such intensity? What is music? Hey, I'm Linda Mariano. And I'm Dan Golding. And this is What Is Music, a show about how music works, how it's made, and how it affects us. In this series, we're going to be looking at a whole heap of questions that you might have about music, from why do humans like a good beat to how do you write a hit song? In this first episode, we're getting back to the basics, to the voice, to the original instrument to make music. Because we're the voice, try and understand it, make a noise and make it clear. Later on in the show, I'm going to be chatting to some professional singers about how they shape their voices to suit their different styles. But first, how do we actually sing? I'm here at the University of Sydney's Voice Lab and they're going to test me like a guinea pig uh, for a whole bunch of things like how much air I use when singing and how efficient I am with my voice. Take a big deep breath for us. P, 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 P. Science is weird. And now can you sing for us? There's a bear in there and a chair as well. Voice Lab director Kate Maddell is one of the driving forces in the study of how and why we sing. To make voice, we actually need our three elements. There's the power, which is the lungs that we get the air into. So we've got the air now coming up through the windpipe. We hit what we call the larynx, or the voice box. And inside, we've got two strips of muscle. So if I recreate that vocal cord, I'll have a firm base and a floppy edge. Now, if I put an air stream over it, it'll flutter and make sound. Once we've made the sound, it's got to come out. This is a tube that it's coming out of. The sound of the voice can actually change depending on the shape of the tube. The captain, he swore. It's play school. We can actually see that you have too much air when you're singing <laughs> and you have to get rid of it. Right. See these big oh, yeah. peaks here? They're actually at the oh. ends of your phrases. Right, You went, see. there's a bear in there. Oh, there's yeah. too much air. Yeah. So in fact, singing is a very athletic, extreme form of speaking that we can change the tone through multiple ways in the instrument, which is why, of course, we are so impressed with very good singing. It represents an enormous achievement in control of the human body. Luckily, we had opera veteran Jermaine on hand to show us how a real professional uses their voice. It's still pretty weird. When Jermaine is singing, she's taking much bigger deep breaths, expanding both her rib cage and her abdomen. And when she's using her voice, she's actually keeping her abdomen extended as a way of managing and controlling the air. Whereas when Dan was singing, he would just let his abdomen collapse really quickly. Okay, I get it. My abdomen sucks. But we couldn't leave without one more extremely invasive test. So we're about to see a slow motion view of my vocal cords. A uh, camera's going uh, in my mouth, <laughs> which is going to be interesting and fun, I hope. <laughs> well done, Dan. Nobody thinks you're afraid. Tongue out, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Deep breath for me, deep breath for me. Ah, uh, gross. And... Deep breath, deep breath. Down here. That is disgusting. Let's see it in slow-mo. This deeply disturbing image is my vocal folds filmed at 4,000 frames a second. But hey, we've all got them. I think one of the most common misconceptions is that you can only sing if you've had training. Anybody can sing. The judgment that we might put on ourselves about that is often the limiting factor, not anything to do with the voice itself. Singing 
is essentially a joyous way of expressing who you are and how you feel. And whether you're on pitch or not, whether you're singing the right words or not, and whether you're singing in the right rhythm or not, doesn't change that. Well, in that case, I guess this one goes out to me. E. <gasps> What? Dan, your flaps! <laughs> They're really out there! Yeah, for the whole world to see. I love them! I feel a Be little proud. exposed. Free yeah. the flaps, man! <laughs> Look, now that we know the physical side of singing, it is time to take it to the next step. So I sat down with three people at polar opposites of the music spectrum. A soul singer. I just draw some roses. A metal singer. Tell me why I didn't die in that swimming pool. And an opera singer. <laughs> to discover how differently they manipulate their voices. You have such different styles, and there are so many other styles of singing as well, but how did you each find what you do specifically? I just have always loved singing low. And so I always kind of thought it was like my rebel voice. <laughs> <laughs> Your alter ego. Yeah. yeah, so when I discovered jazz, I just got really obsessed. The different tones people can access, it's just kind of limitless. You're supposed to be able to find a fingerprint of your voice. Mm. Yeah. Like, and that's what you're working towards, almost. How do you sound different to everyone else? I think I heard, like, a lot of other bands doing it. Uh, obviously, like, that kind of genre of music, so I was like, well, I want to do this. And um, there's not really any, any, like, lessons or anything you can do to kind of work it out. Are you imitating, like, are you trying to hear somebody else sing? That's what I was, that's kind of, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's kind of how it started, I guess, like, to imitate what they were doing. But then even that's kind of, like, really strange because you don't know exactly what they're doing. They're literally screaming. <laughs> Start off with, I just kind of like had to wait till all my housemates left and scream, <laughs> literally scream in my room, and then just wow. hope I don't get institutionalized for it. Like. <laughs> I do a lot of word painting, so you kind of like try and like get inside a word and like figure out what way to lean. Like if there's like a little bit of a smile in in what you're doing. I'm staging at the sneak into like that's kind of like you kind of you're smiling while you're singing. Yeah. Or you could go, um, like, the same line. I'm staging up, sneaking the virgin on my... I kind of think about it really... It's quite psychological for me, at least about the actual mechanics of it. We okay. also challenged our trio to have a go at singing in the other styles. Um, so, yeah, so I guess kind of, like, letting a lot of breath out and trying to make it quite rhythmic. Ooh, baby, give me one more chance To show you that I love you Won't you please let me back in your heart People are always quite excited when we do start to sing and they're like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. They're like, oh my gosh, how, does that, how do they make that sound? What's yeah. like the hardest thing that you need to nail technique-wise? Movement, like before when I was singing the, run, the runs, it's the runs that I find really difficult. <laughs> Something like that. Wow. Like, oh God, it's like, ah, uh, and then you go, where am I going? But then you're just like, don't think about it too much because if you think about it too much, it gets stodgy. If you're singing the scale and you're not emphasising every note, your ears fill in the notes that I haven't emphasised. Right. And so it, it's almost an illusion in, like, in your ear. Right. Yeah. Kind of like reading. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, you yeah. Can, like, like see, oh, like, certain exactly. letters. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, cool, what's that word? If you run your tongue from your teeth to the back, it's hard until the like, back bit. Mm. And that's your soft palate. So what is that? <laughs> Wait, so what, I'm singing into that or? You kind of, you're singing into that, but that needs to be arch, arch. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> you need to be, it needs to be, it needs to be up, that's all. You don't need to sing into it, it needs to I just be up. I think you're an opera singer now. <laughs>
Because opera is often in Italian, we often sing with quite round vowels. Oh, oh, baby, oh, baby, baby. <laughs> oh, baby, give me one more chance. Won't you please let me back in your heart? <laughs> that was good. I feel like it's this general perception that opera singers sing so, so loud, like that it was gonna break some <laughs> glass, glass. Oh. which is probably the stupidest thing to say. <laughs> but actually, it was John that was ridiculously yeah. loud. <laughs> oh, baby, give me one more chance. The microphone didn't like that. Did it? <laughs> <laughs> but what is, how does it, how does it work in terms of volume? Like, are you thinking about how loud you need to be? For opera singing, it's more about cut. It's that you actually have to sing within a certain frequency so that every other instrument in the orchestra isn't singing at your frequency. Mm. And so that's what people hear out there. It's like you're aiming for a target rather than trying to sing as loud as you can. I'm interested about, like, John, when you sing, because you do this amazing thing where you go from screaming to, like, melodic singing and then back to screaming and then two seconds later back into melody. What is going on? <laughs> how does that work? I don't know. Do you know how that how I got that sound was because I couldn't sing high enough, so I just screamed it instead because it was kind of easier to scream. It surprised me how resonant the screaming was. Like it had tone to it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That makes yeah. Sense. yeah. You can change pitch with it and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, you can kind of eventually control it. Oh, baby, give me one more chance. Won't you please let in your heart. <laughs> it's there. Yeah, well, uh, so to do that, you just gotta scream. <laughs> do you take higher breaths? No, no, I like fill my tummy up and then yeah. just kind of like push it until it kind of crackles. Some really uh, top notch music theory. If you... <laughs> 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 the crackle, you gotta get that crackle. Yeah! Like that. Imitate now. <laughs> one, two, three, four. Oh, baby, give me one more chance. <laughs> Won't you please let me back in your heart? <laughs> You're just singing loud. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> What I loved about that is that they all had so much in common, but that they, they all really wanted to get better as well. I know, they were so curious about each other's styles, even though they were so different. Yeah. Like, Jermaine was even saying at the end that she wanted to incorporate metal screamo into her opera singing in the future, <laughs> which I just loved. Yeah, I mean, people think of singing as like a gift that you're born with, but that's not actually true at all. Yeah, exactly. It's a tool for communication. You can always improve on it. So basically, if you want to sing, Dan, <laughs> you should sing. I think I will. And if I want to sing, or if you want to sing, you definitely should. And in fact, here are some top tips. Posture's really important, so it's a good idea to keep everything as upright as you can. So relax your shoulders and lift your body up from your chest. Support. Put your hands on your rib cage, breathe in, and then breathe out. Feel all these muscles around here? Make sure these are engaged while you're singing. Remember to relax. Your mouth doesn't need to be wide enough to fit a fist in it, but keep your jaw relaxed. Ah! Hope you're singing right now. Also, check out our episode on why we love a good beat or one of our many other topics.